Cloat. Thanks. Uh, I'm going to uh, borrow from something attributed to William Gibson, who said, or his editor rewrote, uh, the future is already here, it's just not evenly distributed yet. And I think that's true of the decentralized web. How many of you actually know what D-Web is? Okay, I'll tell you. Um, it, it starts as a clumsy attempt to extend the Web 2 phenomenon of 15 years ago, or 16 years ago. People still use Web 3. What does it mean? When we were building the early internet, the web browser, Netscape, JavaScript, everybody was setting up a server and putting cat pictures on it, it was great. So that's a centralized system because you have clients all making requests to a server. That's the machine you request. And the server knows a lot about the clients thanks to JavaScript and cookies, things like that. Uh, there are other ways to connect computers that are more distributed. Sometimes you see textbooks that mix these pictures up, but notice that even in this distributed system, there's still a hand on the super node, which is the most connected node or the root of a tree, if there is a tree. We can do better. The internet protocol was meant to be peer-to-peer, -peer, truly decentralized, so it looks more like a mesh. That's what you should see when you read articles about decentralization, and not the other picture. But because of the way networks work, this is true in, in biological life and physics, the first and second place winners who had the most popular servers tended to take over. And the only recourse we have is our own machines, our independent apps and browsers, something new under the sun, blockchains, and similar peer-to-peer -peer networks, which supervene on the internet protocol, which is itself peer-to-peer, -peer, and cryptographic protocols we can use to defend our data. We have these tools, they're just not evenly distributed. How many people here use Brave? All right, great. <laughs> How many people use MetaMask? I will cite both of those as examples of truly independent apps that allow you to access the decentralized web now, today. Uh, the second uh, blockchain category has things like Bitcoin, Ethereum, famous for smart contracts. There are peer-to-peer -peer networks for storage like IPFS. There are fast new networks, blockchains, and interesting kinds of chains like Solana. And we have cryptographic protocols that are becoming quite common. Privacy Pass, which we use a Brave, a variant of. Zero Knowledge Proofs, we also use those. Uh, but the problem is, first of all, what happened in the 90s and the noughties led to these monopolies and duopolies, and they have a lot of power over us. They have all our data, we log into them, they're the servers we went to naively and trusted. And it requires us to fight them to establish the decentralized web in a uniform, distributed way. So I'll just cite some examples. There was bad news from a disclosure of unredacted documents that a judge in the antitrust case in the United States compelled Google to release. Lots of uh, dirty laundry came out. But we knew separately from other cases that if you're using Chrome and you're in an incognito window, a private window, you're still being tracked. This came out uh, through lawsuits in the US. Um, Apple, which I'm loyal to, has a better brand. They don't have an ad or tracking system that puts them in conflict with their user. But they kind of run a tight ship. They, they're very controlling of their store, and this is going to court as well for antitrust and lawsuit reasons. Uh, Facebook, I don't want to talk about much. It's, it's a manipulation platform. I think we know this. Uh, unfortunately, all our friends and relatives are there, especially at my age. I try to ignore them. Um, and Amazon is not a monopoly, but it's very powerful, so it has the ability to deplatform new apps on false pretenses, I would claim, because whatever you think of Parler, the content that was objected to, that it hosted, was nothing compared to what Twitter still has up and has not taken down. Um, and Microsoft, <laughs> old habits die hard. I think they believe that the antitrust police are looking elsewhere. So, you know, they're looking at Google and maybe Apple or Facebook. So it's, it's okay to go back to tying Edge as the new browser that replaced Internet Explorer aggressively into Windows. Uh, and what's worse, this is alleged, not proven yet, Google and Facebook colluding, price fixing, that's a felony under antitrust law in the US. Uh, Google and Microsoft colluding, trying to slow down privacy efforts, working together. 
Um, Google pretending to be in favor of the publishers, but really slowing down any publisher who doesn't use Google's controlling platform and their open washed board that runs it, which is really a Google creature. So beware of open washing and green washing. Uh, to fight back, lead users must band together with independent apps and blockchains and protocols that help people protect their data. This has implications. We want privacy on by default. I'll get into more of why that is. We believe there should be a private ad option because not everyone can afford to pay for content. Not all publishers can get subscribers, so they all try. I don't know about you, I'm not gonna subscribe to a thousand sites. It's just not gonna happen. I subscribe to several on Substack. It's, it's doing better and the price is right. But there has to be uh, an option for people who can't or won't pay that's supported by private ads. And we also believe search should be private. Search is inherently global. It's collecting everybody's queries and finding the best answers, whatever those are. And that may be decentralized, but it's a global algorithm, so there has to be privacy. Uh, and we think because of the user-first nature of the decentralized web, you have to have a wallet. Whether you're using conventional fiat currency, cryptocurrency, credit cards, loyalty points, you should have a wallet in your browser. To do this right, I think I had to invent Brave, but other browsers do this too, so I'm not saying this is unique to Brave. There are browsers now that block tracking by default, varying degrees of rigor. Brave is as rigorous as we can be, uh, and we're always improving it because the tracking adversary is always working to evade us. So they use things like fingerprinting, which is a way of statistically identifying you or your device. Uh, we again, want to provide a private ad option, we built that. Google, late to the party, is talking about a privacy sandbox and a bunch of bird-named complex new proposals that is Google the arsonist pretending to be the firefighter. I don't think the antitrust cops will allow it, uh, and it's over-engineered and complex and all rushed. It looks very much like Google self-dealing the solution to the problem they created. Uh, but we will see more private ads, and the reason is you're paying for ads. If you don't use brave or rigorous tracking protection system that blocks ads, your data plan fees go in large part to downloading those ads. This slows down your browsing, it burns your battery, and you're actually paying for the ads. You should get paid instead. And it's because this thing evolved, again, like a sort of ill-managed biological uh, experiment. And you have all sorts of requests flying back and forth just to get an ad to show. And a lot of those transit all the way from end to end, which means they're using your data plan. Um, I wanted to talk about decentralized finance. I mentioned we believe there should be a wallet in every browser. This has to be something that you, you can use without a bank or an intermediary. That means you're doing self-custody. You are your own custodian. It's a little scary, but there are security products that help you control access and not lose your funds. There are backups on systems with those security keys. So a lot of users are electing to do this because you're truly free, it's very refreshing. You can send directly to someone else on a blockchain, on a peer-to-peer -peer network. You can do things like save and borrow. You can save and earn interest, you can borrow and pay interest, and the unbanked have access to this in many parts of the world where they couldn't get it through a bank. Uh, this is a picture of the new Brave Wallet that's coming out. It shows you charts of your assets, it allows you to buy and sell and get quotes and we're adding DeFi options, we want to make it easy for you to choose, if you like to, auto-earn through what's called yield farming, finding the best return on your crypto assets. Um, and we're adding options for centralized exchanges, which we all need because of the regulators and the way that they all tie into fiat currencies, there have to be centralized exchanges. Uh, and so those options are coming in the Brave Wallet too. I wanted to talk how you get from web two to three because my whole life for the last 27 years has been about evolution from web one to two, 16 years ago, and now to three. You have to build from the web we have to the web we want. So there are ways to trigger what are called decentralized applications from existing web pages. So from web two pages, you can trigger your own wallet in a browser like Brave or an extension or a mobile app like MetaMask and it will bring up a wallet and connect. Uh, there are ways for these decentralized apps to have storage that's in, not in the cloud under somebody's control that can be censored, but decentralized. 
split up and addressed by its own content, by cryptographic hash. IPFS is one example. We have that supported in Brave. Uh, IPFS is used by a lot, of, a lot of dApps. I think a lot of these dApps are still going strong. Some of them, uh, there are new ones that are not shown here. Um, and something that's attracting a lot of attention and some, some uh, trolling is uh, non-fungible tokens, which you might think of as a, like a collector's item that was signed by a celebrity. It's, it's a unique collectible. Uh, and there are digital forms of these. There are forms that tie to real world assets and there are things like memberships, like the Unlock Protocol support. So you can actually get a membership with a publisher or creator. You could trade it or sell it if you wanted to, but as long as it's yours, you have status with that creator as a member of their, their uh, subscriber network. Um, I mentioned web search. I mentioned how it is a global algorithm, but there are parts of it that can and should be decentralized. So we actually have Brave Search out now. You can use it. If you install Brave afresh, you get Brave Search by default and we're going to work to promote it to people who already use Brave and stuck with our old default, which is mostly Google. Um, we're, we're not gonna force you to use it, but we'll promote it, and I hope a lot of people will try it, because as we bring it up, the more people that use it, the better it gets. We found a way to beat Google incrementally without becoming Google, and we do it privately. We do not track users or identify them in any way. We have an anonymous opt-in system for contributing to the search index, and we have a way of viewing the index in a community rule set governed fashion that does re-ranking and can remove objectionable entries for the people in that community. That's called goggles, and that's, that's a high priority for us. There are nation states that might require us to do that. We're just gonna tell them to use goggles just like anybody else could. And we want to get private ads to pay the user into search. It's, it's, a, it's gonna take a little while, but that's part of our mission. Um, just to, to focus on Brave to show how this decentralized web is appealing to people. We've grown quite a bit. We're over 42 million monthly users. We have over 7.8 million wallets, mostly using basic attention token. We have a lot of creators and publishers, merchants coming over 1.28 million. Uh, we're split between mobile and desktop. And uh, the basic attention token is, is doing quite well. Uh, a lot of our creators are YouTubers. So I call that out there because since 2015, they've been treated poorly. They've been demonetized. We have a direct ad sales team. We have a private ad system that matches ads on your device in your browser. We don't take any data out. We prefer can't be evil to don't be evil. So the matching of the ad by its metadata, think of it as keywords associated with a link to the ad creative, is done on, in your browser privately and only if you consent to it. This is off by default. You turn it on if you want to participate and then you can get 70% of the gross revenue. If you don't like ads, you can turn them off and fund the wallet yourself and just pay out of your own pocket to support creators. You can do both, people do both. So our direct sales team has done really well with a lot of brands, not just VPNs and crypto brands, but mainstream ones. Um, and of course, we have great partners in the crypto space. Just wanted to give them a quick shout out. I've seen eToro is here. Um, so the decentralized web will still have servers, right? The wheel is, is Lindy, it's been around 10,000 years. We still have wheels, they've gotten high tech, but a, a good old wheel on a wheelbarrow still works. Servers are going to be there in the future, even with decentralization. But they shouldn't hog your data, because what happened was the, the monopolies and duopolies captured that data and treated us as sheep to be shorn of our wool, without any respect or even consent, and sometimes subjecting us to fraud and malware threats. Uh, so we've got to free ourselves from these bloated data vampires. The antitrust cases are productive in this sense, I think. Um, don't want the courts to de invent the future, but I want them to uphold the law. And that's important for innovation. That's important to avoid the old incumbents locking down the future and making it what they want so they own the next version of the web. And we believe users should be rewarded. If they want to get private ads, they can get a big slice of the revenue. If they want to fund things themselves, they can do that. They can do both. And there should always be privacy by default. There should be no data collection. Even Brave doesn't want that. We don't want to be a small data vampire. Uh, and of course, with the wallet, you can do things like peer-to-peer -peer payments and decentralized finance. There's decentralized storage like IPFS. This is all coming together, just not evenly distributed. So please join us. Use Brave, use MetaMask. Participate in the decentralized web to make it more evenly distributed. And just to show you some 
updates from what I showed two years ago at Web Summit. I showed a version of this where we had 8 million users and 300,000 creators. Now we're at 42 million and over 1.28 million creators. We want to go within the next, I don't know, nine months to uh, adding different kinds of assets quickly. Some of these are already available. And then we want to go to a much bigger world with maybe 66 million users, 1.6 million creators, and users can be creators, so there's peer-to-peer -peer nature here. And probably within a year and a half or two, we'll get to 100 million users, 2 million creators. At that point, the web standards will respond to the innovators like Brave and MetaMask. So thank you very much, and please join us.